via satellite from the WRCX Rock 103.5 Studios in Chicago, the home of the NBA World Champion Chicago Bulls. AT&T presents Rockline, North America's number one interactive rock radio program. Rockline is brought to you by 1-800-CALL-ATT. dial -ins always get a lower price than 1-800-COLLECT for all interstate calls. And by the Air Force. Learn tomorrow's skills in today's Air Force. Rockline takes you live across America and around the world. Tonight, Rockline gives you a chance to speak live with the members of Smashing Pumpkins. We're taking your calls toll-free at 1-800-344-ROCK. That's 1-800-344-7625. Now, here's your host, Steve Downs. Well, we are live in Chicago indeed, and uh, we've come up with at least uh, one parallel between uh, the city's premier rock band, the Smashing Pumpkins, and uh, the legendary basketball team that I understand is from around these parts. Both of them are focused on a dream. They've assembled the right talent, and they didn't rest until the goal was reached. Uh, the not rest part actually could be taken quite literally in the case of the Smashing Pumpkins. 20-hour work days and, uh, and seven-day work weeks were not uncommon for the completion of uh, the double CD, Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness. Joining us here live at uh, Rock 103.5 here in Chicago, lead vocalist, guitarist, and principal songwriter for Smashing Pumpkins, Billy Corrigan. Billy, how you doing? Okay. Good to have you here. And uh, also uh, drummer Jimmy Chamberlain. And uh, Jimmy, I think uh, a happy belated birthday would be... Apropos. Yes, thank you. About a week ago there. Happy birthday. Whoa. Um, you guys, we talked... Uh, yeah, so, thanks, Mom. <laughs> about your uh, busy schedule, and uh, I, I was looking over your itinerary, and I, and I noticed it's it's pretty well jammed and has been uh, uh, for the last few months and on into the summer. However, I couldn't help but notice, Billy, uh, one hole in the itinerary that happened to coincide with the NBA Finals, <laughs> and I want... Now, was that a coincidence, or uh, was no, that some I, very well thought out uh, planning there? That was actually a happy accident. Really? Um, I thought I'd missed the whole thing, actually. So you happened to be, you ended the Australian and New Zealand legs, what, late last month? Right. And then uh, sort of had some downtime here and then and kicked it off again, and it just a happy accident, as they say. Very, <laughs> that, very, I actually got to see the game last night, so. Did you go to the game in person there? Oh, yeah. So you were in uh, San Francisco then on Saturday. And I was in... Seattle on Wednesday and Friday. <laughs> you went to the Seattle, the, the games in Seattle. Yeah, the ones where they lost. Unfortunately, I thought I was start be like a bad luck token. <laughs> <laughs> we happened to uh, we did the show last week, as a matter of fact, in Seattle with uh, Soundgarden. You didn't happen to hear that show, did you? You didn't happen to hear any of that stuff I said about the the Supersonics, did you? Oh, no. good. I'm glad you. Well. Uh -huh. It was. <laughs> you didn't hear that stuff about the Bulls that I said last week. No, oh, no, okay, no. Good. That's okay. Hey, uh, all I know is it's over. That's right. Thank, Thank God. And the ring is on the is on this side for sure. Um, uh, Jimmy, uh, opening the summer tour in San Francisco was at the uh, the Tibetan Freedom Festival, which was a big uh, two day gig at Golden Gate Park in San Francisco. How did that go? Who was there? And what happened? What was that all about? Um, well, it base it really wasn't starting the tour. It was kind of a one off show for us. Um, <laughs> I just got hit in the head with something from the from the That's okay. from it, above. We'll it, just say it happens often. Um, <laughs> that was a sign from God. That's right. Yeah. Um, basically, it was to uh, raise awareness about the plight of the Tibetan monks and mm -hmm. you know and the the oppression they're they're um, they're undergoing from the Chinese government. And uh, you know, I thought it was I thought it was a big success. There was eighty thousand people there the day we played, and and I'm sure there was about the same the second day. And um, the pumpkins aren't usually too big on doing political things, but, mm -hmm. but things that concern humanity and um, you know the indignation of of a people, mm -hmm. I think is something that everybody needs to get involved in. And uh, we were happy to do it. I think it was a big success. Number of bands there, uh, in addition to the Smashing Pumpkins, uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers, I think, right, and Beastie uh, Boys, Beastie uh, Boys. Tribe Called Quest, Foo uh, Fighters, Sonic Youth, John Lee Hooker, and uh, Buddy Guy. Sounded like a great lineup. Yeah, it was good. Uh, we are here live in Chicago, and we're feeling it all tonight on Rockline. We are back with Billy and Jimmy from the Smashing Pumpkins. 
back here live in Chicago. I want to say hi, first of all, to everybody who's listening to us in Chicagoland tonight on Rock 103.5. Glad you could join us this evening, and uh, I'm sure we'll be hearing from some of you. Uh, give us a call so we can put you on the air live and nationwide with the Smashing Pumpkins. And I believe we're going to go to the phones now. Uh, caller, are you on the air? Yeah. Hi, what's your name? Eric. Eric, and where are you calling from? Barry. Uh, okay, Eric, what's your question for uh, the Smashing Pumpkins? Uh, I just wanted to uh, ask two of them. I was okay. wondering, uh, first, uh, who came up with the uh, idea for the Tonight Tonight video? And second question is, um, are there any plans for a new album out in the future? Um, well, the, the video concept was actually from uh, Jonathan and Valerie. Um, this uh, married couple that we do a lot of our video work with. And it was their idea. The, the original concept from the video comes from a director called M Mie, who made some of the first movies uh, early in the 1900s. And as far as a new album, we probably won't have a new album out until uh, either the end of 1997 or the, somewhere in 1998. We are planning to release, hopefully, a, um, a, a box set of our singles all, with all our B-sides. And we're, we're shooting to have 28 B-sides um, that would be all in one package for Christmas. And uh, some of the stuff would only be available in the box set. So there'll be no new, new material, but we're still putting out s some of the B-side stuff for Melancholy. Barry, thanks for the call. He's uh, calling from 93.5 WTPA in Harrisburg tonight. Chad is at 106 RDU in Raleigh this evening. Chad, you're on with Smashing Pumpkins. All right. How's it going? <laughs> All, All right. right. Whoa, Chad. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Here we go. Okay. How do you feel about um, the evolution of the band over the past, um, over the last four years? Then? That's a really good question. Yeah. Jimmy? Um, well, I think I think if you go through and listen to the records, you'll see, you know, if you listen to Gish, you'll hear a very young band with a lot of big ideas. And, uh, you know, I think I think the band has matured gracefully. I think um, definitely from a rock standpoint, the band is, is, has reached some type of zenith. Um, but yeah, it's I think I think from the starting point till now, I think we've achieved pretty much everything we've wanted to do as far as as far as a rock context goes. And I think the the thing you'll see in the future is is a little a little step ahead of that, maybe a little bit uh, more embracing technology. And um, who knows? But yeah, I, I think the band has been a very natural progression. How about the the musical environment in general from the late '80s compared to now? Uh, particularly here in Chicago, is uh, is it is it much different now than it was, uh, you know, back in 1988 or so? Mm. You're really asking the wrong people because we're never here. <laughs> <Is that> right? <laughs> <laughs> we're not um, home. No, I, I think you know. I think definitely with the success of the Pumpkins, there's been a little bit more attention paid to Chicago, and mm. I, th I think it's a really good thing. Um, unfortunately, we don't get out very much to hear any of the newer bands because we're always working. But um, bands, bands, definitely, you know, bands like Urge Overkill. Definitely great bands yeah. and bands that deserve, you know, a lot of attention. So. Chad, thanks for the call. Uh, even listening to 98 Rock in Baltimore tonight. Even, you're on with Billy and Jimmy. Uh, first of all, that's Evan, but don't worry. Evan? But, yeah, no problem. <laughs> that's even said, later. That's right. <laughs> they, get my, they get my name wrong, too, so don't worry about it. Um, all right. Even's cool. on next. That's right. But, What's um, the question there, Evan? Yeah, I just wanted to say, um, I've seen you guys in concert a couple times, and I noticed that um, you do not, like, play your rare stuff and b-sides very much and uh i'm seeing you guys twice in a row like this summer and i was wondering will you be playing more of your b-sides and stuff because like uh there's the ones that you release like for sign stream and like on tonight tonight were right. just like some of the best ones i've ever heard so Th thank you um that's another really good question unfortunately we found that um the popularity of the band has kind of narrowed what we what we can play as a live band um you know, when we used to tour on Gish and early in Siamese Stream, we used to play a lot of our alternate material and covers and things like that. But these days with the size crowds that we seem to be playing in front of, it's really hard. People basically want to come to hear the songs that they know. And you get into a position where, you know, you play stuff that maybe only 5 to 10% of the crowd knows, and you put yourselves in a difficult position to try to get everybody to have a good time. So we've, we've taken the, the high road on it, which is just to try and uh, keep people happy and, and kind of and not be so difficult. I mean, we were we were a very difficult band to listen to and and go to see live for a very long time. So for us, this is something we worked into, 
it's not always been the case. Right. Uh, Evan, thanks for the call. Jean Marie, listening to Rock 105.3 in San Diego tonight. You're on with the Smashing Pumpkins. Hello. Okay. Hello. Hello. I'm really nervous. Don't be nervous. Okay. Okay, what was your experience like playing the guitar with David Gilmore? Hmm. Um, it was, uh, that made me very nervous. <laughs> <laughs> and I actually, uh, this was, she's referring to, um, I played with um, some of the members of Pink Floyd for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Uh, induction of Pink Floyd, and uh, I was very nervous. And unfortunately, um, I blew the uh, the first time <laughs> I blew the chord the first time David comes in to sing, and I thought, "Oh, rock and roll tragedy." <laughs> but uh, they're really great guys, and I've actually seen um, I've seen a couple of them since, and uh, it was a great thrill. Um, you know, they they represented to me at probably the age you're at what um, hopefully we re represent to you. So mm -hmm. it was a kind of a full circle feeling for me. Did you ever hear that expression? Uh it's not wise to be too close to your idols. Sure. I went. I, I don't. Not necessarily with Pink Floyd, but not excluding them. Mm -hmm. uh, does that ring true to you at all, either with them or with uh, other folks that you've met? I've I've been lucky to meet some really great people. Um, I've gotten to know Rick Nielsen from Cheap Trick a little bit. I've gotten to know Rick Kasich from The Cars a little bit, and I found that everybody that I admire, the things I admire about them, still hold mm -hmm. true. They're still great people, um, and the qualities that attracted to me me to them at 15 are the same qualities that attract me to them at, at 29. Mm. Um, I think the, the fact that I, I, I was attracted to bands who were themselves right. holds true for the, the, the personalities of the people later on. And my experiences up until this point have been nothing but great. We are live in Chicago with the Smashing Pumpkins bullet with butterfly wings on rock line. The Smashing Pumpkins. The world is a vampire. Bullet with Butterfly Wings, the Smashing Pumpkins. We're live in Chicago tonight. So is uh, this Billy. He's listening to uh, the station we're at right now. Walk? walk? <laughs> That's a different walk thing. Walk Yeah, this is a different thing. Rock 103.5 uh, here in Chicago. Billy, you're hey. on with Billy and Jimmy. Hey, guys. Uh, my question was for Billy. I was wondering, have you always called yourself Billy? Have you ever used Bill? And uh, I was wondering if people ridicule you and, and say your child is for using the Y in your name. <laughs> you know, this is actually a very interesting concept. Jimmy knows this whole bit. Um, actually, my father was always Billy. Could you please call me Jim? <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry, Jim. My father was always Billy, so everyone called me Bill. But when I turned 18, I decided that I was that Bill reminded me of all my uncles, you know, who had pot bellies. <laughs> so I thought I'd I thought I'd go to Billy. And it's really funny because I'll introduce myself to grown men as Billy, and they'll say, "Oh, nice to meet you, Bill." <laughs> so they don't accept it. They they can't deal with it. Um, you know, I, I'm, 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 I feel like, you know, I want to go for like kind of a share Madonna thing, you know, like, you, you know, there's only one Billy. That's right. Even, even when I'm 50. Perhaps you could at some point be the, the person formerly known as Billy, but <laughs> how about you, Billy, there on the phone now? You're Billy, obviously, right? Right. Um, oh, he was. Well, oh. And maybe See, in sixth he, grade, he, he I think I went over to Billy. <laughs> he, was, he was known as Billy right before that. Uh, we will have uh, more of your phone calls and more music and conversation with the Smashing Pumpkins coming up on the Global Satellite Network. Stick around. We are back live from Chicago, continuing our uh, on-the-road radio extravaganza that we've been doing the last few weeks. Next stop, a uh, week from tonight, will be high, and I do mean high, atop the uh, brand-new Stratosphere Hotel and Casino in beautiful Las Vegas. We'll be there with the Scorpions. The band's new CD is called Pure Instinct. They're on the road, and they've decided to join us for a night off in Vegas. Asked us if we'd come up, and we said... Sure. Uh, from the Stratosphere Hotel overlooking the world-famous Las Vegas Strip, 90 Minutes with the Scorpions. Hope you'll join us for that a week from tonight, exclusively on Interactive Radio Rock Live. My name is Steve Downs. We're here on the uh, City by the Lake tonight from the studios of the station that rocks this town big time, Rock 103.5. Uh, as a matter of fact, 
Uh, two weeks from tonight, we'll be having Metallica from right here in Chicago, and Joe Robinson from Rock 103.5 will be your host, as I'm going to get a, uh, a night off that week. Uh, the station also has uh, been giving away some tickets to a little victory party going on this evening at a club where the guest of honor is Dennis Rodman. And I don't know if this is true or not, but I hear that the dress code is no shirt, no shoes, please. But that is unverifiable at the moment. Smashing Pumpkins on Rockline Cherub Rock. Cherub Rock from the Siamese Dream CD, The Smashing Pumpkins. Billy Corgan, Jimmy Chamberlain with us live in Chicago tonight. Our next call is John. He's in the Bristol Kingsport area listening to Q104 this evening. Hi, John. Hey, guys. I really love your music. And uh, I was wondering where you came up with the name for your album, Siamese Dream. Um, hmm. No one ever believes me, but these things just come to me. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, I really never thought about it. It just came to me one day, and, and it, it was almost like when I I get these little dumb thoughts, and it, when I heard that in my head, I thought, there's the title that's of it. the album. Yeah, right. And that's how it's been for all the albums. Yeah. It just comes to me, and that's it. I, I never really think about it much. Yeah. I think the important thing is, though, that you listen. <laughs> you know, when, it's, <laughs> when it's there, that you're listening. That the, Sometimes we don't do that. I mean, the, the album could have easily been called, like, Siamese Cat. No, like... Ham bone baked fries. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe ne maybe for the next one. <laughs> I kind of like that. John, uh, thanks for the call. Let me pass along a few dates here uh, for the Smashing Pumpkins. Uh, they'll be back out on the road the 25th of June in uh, Saginaw, Michigan. Uh, also, Indianapolis on the 27th. Two dates in Detroit on the 29th and 30th at, uh, well, either Auburn Hills or Pine Knob. I suppose they'll make that decision sometime before you get there, hopefully. Uh, also, <laughs> wow. yeah, or maybe you'll do both. I don't know. Uh, Buffalo, New York on the 2nd of July and Cleveland on the 3rd as where some of the dates you can catch the Smashing Pumpkins this summer. David, he is in Austin, Texas, listening to KLBJ FM 93.7. David. Hey, I just wanted to say that um, at your new, uh, at the new 96 tour, you've been playing a version of Silver Crank, and it's amazing. And uh, I was wondering where you got the idea for that. <clears throat> well, that's, that song's a funny song because, uh, well, for those of you who don't know the song very well, he's referring to um, a song off of Siamese Dream. And the way we kind of came up with that song was it was like, I, I kind of told the band what I wanted to try to do, but we never really wrote parts. And we all just kind of made it up as we went along, and I kept changing it, and we kept remaking it, and I direct the band to kind of go in different directions. And so the, the, view, the version of... The song kept mutating till we finally recorded it in one particular guise, but then the song continued to evolve after we recorded it. Then we played it so many times we got sick of that, so we completely went at it in a totally different way. And we're on like our fourth <laughs> completely different version. And, and one thing I've thought of is one day putting out the four different versions of the sure. song because they're all so completely different. Um, it's been a, that song in particular has been an interesting experiment in, in never locking into one version of the mm. song. Good uh, good question there, David. By the way, you'll see them uh, when they come back to Austin, Texas on the 26th of July. Let's go to the Bronx. Uh, Haley, or Hallie, I believe that is, listening to uh, Q104 in New York City. Hallie. Yeah. Hey, guys, I can't wait to see you at the Garden next month. And um, my question's for Billy. Um, did you have to put your voice through some kind of a synthesizer for Tales of Scorched Earth, or was that really your voice? Um, that's actually my voice, just super distorted. Um, when you distort... Uh, something like a voice, certain frequencies tend to pop out, and since I have such a whiny, nasty, Aussie-like voice, um, <laughs> all those nasty, Aussie-like frequencies jump right out. They just get there. Thanks for the call there, uh, Hallie. Uh, two dates at Madison Square Garden on the uh, 12th and 13th is uh, the Smashing Pumpkins. You know, kids... I don't know if this is true of all kids, but when we're younger, we always, when we're seven, we wish we were 10. When we're 11, we can't wait to be 13. When you're 16, you want to be 18. Uh, and when you're 20, 30, you yeah, want to be yeah, 20. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you do get over that at some point, but, but I wondered if there That'll was. That'll all go away soon. If there was ever a, uh, a, a summer, let's say, uh, uh, for you, Jimmy, for, for, for example. Summer of 69. There, yeah, like that. that. You know, when you had that. You and Brian, Ma Brian Adams. Right, <laughs> Brian Adams. Uh, where you sort of have that realization that, like, you know, it is pretty good. And it's probably ne never going to be like this again. I wonder if you ever. Yeah, I think, I think when I was 25, I mean, even though, the, even though the band wasn't really very successful at that point. I mean, just the fact that things were starting to pop for me musically. Um, 
I think that was probably the best year of my life. I mean, even even up till now, I think, you know, in spite of everything that I have now, success, whatever, I think, um, you know, the initial starting point of the band was probably the happiest time of my life. Sure. All, all of what lays out in front of you at that point. Smashing Pumpkins on Rockline, 1979. <laughs> The Smashing Pumpkins, 1979. Billy Corgan, Jimmy Chamberlain, live from Chicago tonight. Chris is in Fort Wayne, Indiana, listening to 98.9 The Bear this evening. Hi, Chris, you're on Rockline. Yeah, I'd just like to ask Billy if they were going to play the double set. Cause they, and... The well, double set. He must have said a bad word. Anyway, oh. um, yeah, we, were, we did a small tour of the U.S. where we, we did two full sets. We played like three hours to play a lot of the kind of the more acoustic kind of material on the album um unfortunately that was just for that mm -hmm. and um we knew we had to play really small gigs to do that so we played like anywhere from a thousand to fifteen hundred right, right. places and and it was great amazing it was probably one of the best things we've ever done for us but it was completely exhausting and my voice barely held through the whole thing because of the i'm no bruce springsteen so um um, I, if you saw it, I'm glad you did because we enjoyed it. But that's that's really about it. No. And we were still, for anyone who's out there scratching their heads, you know, wondering what they missed. I mean, we're still playing about two and a half hours a night as it really? is. Really? Yeah. So. Wow, that's uh, a full night's worth of music for sure. Uh, thanks for the call, there, Chris. If uh, you would like to get one of our 1996 Rockline AT&T calendars, that can be done. It's signed by the guests that appear on the show this month. All you have to do is send us a postcard, put your name, address, and the station you're listening to right now. Mail it to 1996 Rockline Calendar, P.O. Box 4383, Hollywood, California, 90078. The 96 Rockline Calendars, as always, provided by AT&T, and we will have more of your phone calls and more with the Smashing Pumpkins coming up on the Global Satellite Network. We are back live in Chicago with Billy and Jimmy from the Smashing Pumpkins. And uh, remind everybody who gets on the air tonight, uh, at no cost to you, will receive a copy of Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness. What is it? There's that small 25% service charge that I tack on, but I don't worry about it. Anyway, not really. Courtesy of uh, Virgin Records, of course. Back to the phones now. Let's talk to Allie in Oklahoma City listening to Rock 100.5, The Cat. Allie, you're on Rockline with the Smashing Pumpkins. Hi. Um, I have Hello. a few questions. I wanted to know how it was to do that Simpsons episode uh, Lollapalooza thing and how you got involved with that. Um, they basically just called our management and asked, asked if we'd be interested. And we, you know, being huge Simpsons fans, thought, you know, we're not, we don't usually play party to TV things, but um, the Simpsons being so cool and so funny, we thought it'd be, we'd get a kick out of it. And uh, it was actually really easy. We just went into a studio. They gave us our lines. We rehearsed them a couple times, recorded them, and they did the rest, and then they gave us a bunch of really cool free stuff. So, <laughs> <laughs> Allie, you have another question? Yeah, um, I wanted to know what kind of jobs you had as a kid and, like, what you <laughs> did before you were in a band. Um, I only had two jobs ever, um, besides being a ha hapless loser. Um, <laughs> I was a pizza delivery guy, and I worked at a record store. And, Jimmy, what were your jobs? Um, I think my first job was playing drums for a TV polka party television show <laughs> on uh, channel 26 here in chicago and uh after that i just uh i um i did crime until i joined the band <laughs> <laughs> and are, are there any tapes floating around of those uh, polka parties by anyway any chance uh i think i have them all now <laughs> i see you've collected them all and uh i think i heard billy i think i'm right about this that you do an incredible is it homer simpson or, or <laughs> huh? some now it's not really the time. He does a really good Russ Perot. <laughs> <laughs> that, <right? laughs> that may come in handy. Uh, Ali, thanks for the call. Jeff in Arlington, Texas, listening to Q102 in Dallas tonight. Hey, Jeff. Hey, how's it going, man? Good. What's your question? Hey, um, I I, I enjoy like the change from each album. How it's it's uh, it's different in a way. Um, what what's the uh, reasoning? Um. Um, that's another great question. Um, we we always feel that that um, every album is should be like a new book or a new movie or something, 
and as long as it comes from us that that um you know ultimately i think you would hope that the people who buy your records aren't just buying the records because they like one song they're buying the, re the records because they like you and and what you're about and so we just think that the records are different reflections of what we're about and as we change and grow and go go through different things some good and some bad we try to reflect that and um we start we've tried really hard to stay true to that and a lot of people like have viewed melancholy as kind of a you know as a as a negative thing like you know it's like some kind of pompous act but for us we we'd receive so much encouragement from the people and 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 things that had happened in in, in touring on Siamese Dream and the band had so come together we wanted to do something monumental to mark where the band was at and in some ways kind of close the chapter on what everyone would understand us to be so that we can move on to something completely different do you have any sense billy as to w what that new direction may be now that some time has passed from melancholy um we still want i don't think we could play music that didn't move us and that wasn't kind of intense and emotional it's, that's something i don't think we could ever move backwards from but i think it's just our way of thinking you know when we we started um you know it was pre-grunge revolution mm -hmm. um you know stage diving and mosh pitting and all that 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 was not a common theme in, at a concert that those things would only happen when you played really well and you played a music that was really exciting so we witnessed like before that during that and now we're in the after that mm -hmm. and um at one point playing music that way was very much you know the loud soft uh you know up and down kind of it was a way of getting everybody excited and and, and making the, the concerts kind of monumental to use the word again and um and it ceased to be effective in that way and in some ways we almost feel like we're mimicking sometimes what we mm. what we what we helped to start and um i think a lot of bands you know that are in the similar ilk kind of feel the same way so we want to try to create a new intensity that's maybe something a little a little different mm. and doesn't rely on, on the need to perpetuate the audience to perpetuate the concert yeah keep the, the wheel spinning there josh in uh, palm desert california listening to 93.7 kclb tonight hey josh Hi, um, I was wondering, what's like the meaning of zero in the song and with the shirt and everything? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, you know, it's it's supposed to be fairly obvious, but, um, you know, I don't know. I, it's changed for me. I mean, originally it was kind of a funny joke and kind of an idea, but it's kind of caught on and, and people seem to look at it in different ways. Mm. Um you know, <laughs> I'm about ready to take the stupid shirt off. <laughs> no, no, you can never no. Take it off. but the band won't let me. <laughs> no, the shirt stays. That's right, the shirt stays. <laughs> Josh, thanks for the call on Rockline once again. Uh, from the most recent CD, here are the Smashing Pumpkins, Zero. Okay, man. <laughs> Zero, the Smashing Pumpkins. <laughs> Uh, with us live uh, from Chicago tonight. Let me pass along a few more dates here quickly. Two shows in Philadelphia at the Spectrum on the 5th and 6th of July. Hampton, Virginia on the 7th, in the Washington, D.C. area on the 9th and 10th, and then the aforementioned uh, New York dates on the 12th and 13th, and also uh, in East Rutherford, New Jersey, at the Meadowlands on the 14th. Back to New York we go. Colin, uh, listening to Q104 this evening. Hey, Colin. Hi. Hi, uh, my You're question on. is whether um, you participated in the... Um, demonstration that followed the Tibetan Freedom Concert? They had, I understand, uh, I think it was actually today that they were actually going to have a demonstration at the uh -huh. Chinese Embassy and um, uh, reportedly some of the artists who had performed at, over the weekend were going to be there. Uh, we weren't even aware of it. No one, no one said anything. We came home after the... I mean, whatever, this was like our off time mm -hmm. and the only reason we did that concert was we so believe in the cause. Right. I mean this was like an additional kind of thing so we just went and played the concert and came home so there you go colin john in uh, allentown pennsylvania tonight z95 is our station there wzzo what's your question for smashing pumpkins hey guys great to be talking with you Thanks. hey um i have a question for you um i read in a magazine article with you guys recently that um it said that uh, you guys recorded saying after this tour is over this is going to be the end of smashing pumpkins as we know it and I was just curious, what, what exactly does that mean? Does it mean the band's splitting up, or members are going to be leaving, or what? I think that was the end of the world as we know it, wasn't it? <laughs> it sounds like no. he got confused. Um, no, no, I mean, I've been saying, yeah. it's kind of what we were talking right. about before. Um, it's just, I, I think, and, and a lot of people agree with me, that we have a, a very specific sound, 
you know, you can pretty much tell when we come on the radio, that kind of thing. And we want to totally just kind of throw out the rule book and start over. Um, we feel we've reached a point where we can do that and kind of, in a way, start a new band with the four of us, you know. So that's the, that's the simplest way to understand it. Right. It's almost like we'll still be Smashing Pumpkins or The Smashing Pumpkins, same four people, but we're just going to go at it a totally different way. Yeah. If we succeed, it'll be a great thing. It'll open up a whole new chapter for us. If we don't, then, you know, we've had our say. But we can't continue to be a great band and continue to be the same band. The two are, are starting to go head to head. And, um, you know, we're really enjoying this year because it's the it's the it's the the crowning achievement of everything that we've stood for and been about for nine almost nine years and the concerts are going great because we're playing with great passion because we we realize that that this is really the last way we're going to go at it this way so there's a there's an excitement to it and a finality to yeah, it absolutely and that's that hence the long shows i mean we don't want to leave the stage most nights it's right. it's that kind of feeling we know we're closing this chapter so kind of what the guy said if you want to see it i mean this is it because after this we may never you know we may never tour again we may play very few shows we may just make albums we don't know yet yeah all options are open there john thanks for the call uh from once again melancholy and the infinite sadness this is muzzle on rockline <laughs> Back live in Chicago with Billy and Jimmy from the Smashing Pumpkins. Back to the phones now. John, listening to Q102 in Dallas, Texas tonight. You're on Rockline. Yeah, I was just wondering whether or not either of you believe in aliens and just briefly what uh, Billy's childhood was like. <laughs> <laughs> Is somehow, there any correlation? Yeah, I know. I was like, somehow those two are connected. <laughs> um, actually, um, Darcy and I have seen a UFO. So I guess in that way, I do believe in aliens. Um, and um, well, what was my childhood like? Oh, I think that's um, probably a subject that's been <laughs> reported on ad nauseum. <laughs> um, my ch childhood actually was pretty sunny and light, and um, and it was like floating down a, a chocolate river oh, on, really? a, on a strawberry boat. That's nice. <laughs> with tangerine dreams and, uh, and and marmalade eyes. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Uh, you're. Uh, it's no, no great secret that Sorry. Your, your dad was... Uh, thanks for coming back there, Jimmy. Yeah, you your, know. your dad's a guitar player and plays uh, jazz blues professionally. Um, was he... Was there a, a... If you had to single out a, a specific... I don't know if lesson is the right word. Yeah. Or, or just something that, you know, he, that helped you in terms of formulating your style. Does anything come to mind? The greatest thing my father ever told me... Um, well, he told me two great things that have always stuck with me. One was to not bother imitating anyone or anything mm. um and the other one was um to because i was having a hard time finding people to play in a band with he told me that i should not really worry about finding other people and that i should concentrate on the skills that would be necessary to to understand why other people do those things so i started to learn how to try to be a bass player and mm. start to try to understand how drums work and those two things are really what um defined my role in the band mm. One would assume that uh, your father, being a guitar player, you being a guitar player, that that there was a, a you know, a great relationship there mm -hmm. on that level. Do you feel was he supportive of what you were doing, or 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 did he get involved much? I think my father um, had had a hard time with music, and um, he was gone a lot. Um, it brought problems upon the family. You know, it's not the easiest lifestyle. And I think I think now that I've grown older, I think. What I saw at the time is non-support for me musically. I think it was him looking at me, not wanting me to get into ah, this life, right. thinking that if he if he fails in what he's trying to do, that he won't have a good life. And I think that was his trying to be a father, trying to get me to have a good life. You know, I mean, it's it's easy now to look back and say, well, you know, he was wrong in that sense. Mm -hmm. But but um, you know, the chances of, of 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 you know anybody's child being successful is pretty minimal, especially right. for what you know we as a group have aspired to. Right, especially, yeah, in, in, in this business. Uh, going back to their second album, this is Today on Rockline from the Smashing Pumpkins. The Smashing Pumpkins, once again from the Siamese Dreams CD from 1993. Today is the song. Back to the phones, Matt in Bel Air, Maryland, listening to 98 Rock in Baltimore tonight. Matt, you're on Rockline with the Smashing Pumpkins. 
Hey, um, I have two things to say. Um, one thing is, huh. uh, ask or say. <laughs> Go ahead, Matt. Um, I, I don't. I just want to tell Jimmy something. Is that I don't think in any of the songs I've heard, I don't think I've ever heard the same fill played twice. Hmm. Thank you. And um, another thing is that I was wondering why is garbage opening at a few of your concerts? Oh, because uh, actually they're opening up for the first and third legs, and um, we're really good friends with Butch, of course, and uh, we think they're a really good band, and uh, you know they've got something to promote, so why not give them a shot to come out and play? Plus, I really like to golf, and um, Butch is a really good golfer, so I'll have somebody to golf with too, <laughs> and you can borrow his clubs. <laughs> there you go, Matt. Uh, more dates where you can catch uh, uh, the band, by the way, in Pittsburgh on the 16th of July, Cincinnati on the. S well, now wait a minute. I'm not sure this Cincinnati date is still happening, and maybe we could uh, clear that up. But there have been reports that they have uh, the the city fathers and their infinite wisdom in Cincinnati have have canceled that date. As a result of uh, of the tragedy in mm -hmm. in, in Dumbl uh, Dublin, is that's news to us? Yeah, yeah, I haven't heard that. Hopefully, that's uh, not the case, and maybe we can get. In and actually, you know, um, even if that's the case, I just like to um, just take this opportunity to say that if people don't know, a, a, a girl was killed at one of our concerts in uh, in uh, Dublin, Ireland, and we're not quite sure exactly how it happened, but she was obviously injured, and um, you know. The positive thing we'd like to take out of this is everyone has to be way more careful in those situations. Um, unfortunately, when you're young, you think you're immortal and you can't right. get hurt. And um, we're trying to do everything we can to make sure that everyone's safe at our concerts. And uh, that's a tragic situation, and, and, and it's the last thing we'd ever want to see happen again. So. Well, I thought, I thought you made a good point earlier when you are talking about moshing, is how it used to be it was a spontaneous action that was the result of a, you know, a high point at the concerts. You know, it just reached that, that moment. Now, it's more of a fashion thing than, than particularly uh, you know, yeah. inspiring at that particular moment. And, uh, yeah, just uh, time to take stock and, uh, and be cool out there. Matt, thanks for the call. Let's talk to Mike in uh, Peru, New York, listening to 106 WIZN in Burlington, Vermont tonight. Hi, Mike. Hello. Um, I got a question just for either one. Um, two questions, actually. Um, the first is, is there any uh, Floyd influence? Because I remember you were talking about David Gilmore about the fact that your album overall starts with the piano and at the end of the album Melancholy it ends with the same similar piano kind of like Roger Waters used to do with Floyd um, that's a bit of a stretch I mean if there's any, if there's any influence on, 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 on Melancholy in terms of form it would be the White Album uh -huh. Interesting. Thank you uh, for the call there, Mike. Uh, we have more from the Smashing Pumpkins, and of course we'll be uh, taking more of your phone calls. Let's do uh, another track here. Uh, this uh, from the uh, second uh, CD of the package. Now, we talked about the concept or the or, or the lack of concept at the beginning, but both CDs do have their own titles, if you will. Right. And this one uh, uh, is called Twilight to Starlight from that CD, if you will. Smashing Pumpkins on Rockline and Bodies. <laughs> Back live from Chicago on Rockline. A few more Smashing Pumpkins dates to pass along to you quickly here. Moline on the 19th, Kansas City on the 20th. These are all July dates on the 21st in St. Louis. Oklahoma City on the 23rd. Uh, Dallas on the 24th. Austin on the 26th. Lafayette, Louisiana on the 27th. Uh, they'll have dates in August. Uh, two dates in San Francisco. Sacramento, Los Angeles on the 21st. Two dates in Anaheim, California towards the end of the month. Quickly, uh, we want to thank everybody for calling in tonight, making it a really good show and a lot of good calls tonight. We do appreciate that. Next Monday, the Scorpions from atop the new Stratosphere Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. And then the following Monday, July 1st, Rock 1035's very own Joe Robinson will be uh, sitting in for me, and she'll be uh, giving you the chance to speak with James Hetfield and Lars Ulrich from Metallica. Special thanks tonight to Cliff Bernstein and everybody at Q Prime Management. Also to Jeffrey Nauman and Jeannie Warsaw at Virgin Records. Once again, very special thanks to Dave Richards and the gang here at Rock 103.5 in Chicago. Did a great job and made us feel uh, real at home here tonight. And thanks for the umbrellas, too. <laughs> they came in handy. Uh, and also, of course, to our special guests tonight, Billy and Jimmy from the Smashing Pumpkins. I don't know what you guys got cooked up uh, for the next part of your career, but if it's anything like uh, what you've done so far, we're in for some great music. Thank you. you guys Thank you. Have a heck of a job. Thanks for being on the show. I'm Steve Downs. See you. You've been listening to Rockline.